So now there's, there's three main objectives I wanted to cover in this live stream. And one was, what is an IP address like? So I'd like you to pause for a moment with me and think, if you were going to right now talk to a loved one, a friend, a coworker, um, and explain what is an IP address, and there's there's two flavors of IP addresses. There's IPv4, which we're going to focus on on this in this live stream, and then there's IPv6. We'll leave that for another day. But if somebody said, "What is?" or you're talking to him and said, "I'd like to explain what an IP address is," or they asked you, "What is an IP address?" We could say, "Well, an IP address is a lot like an address that you'd have on an envelope." It, like the address for the, the street name and the house number regarding how to forward data over the network to a certain address. That's it. Network address, the street name, and the host address, like the house number. That's it. I'll tell you a fun story. I used to live in uh, a place, not I live in Las Vegas right now, but pre okay, Mr. Mailman, do your magic. And for Grand Lisley, we also put on the state and the zip code and uh, to make it clear on where it was. Now, the mailman would have to know, like, uh, if this is the, like, if part of this is the the street, street name, and part of it is the house number, uh, the mailman would have to know, is it, where's the dividing line, basically? Is this the street? Is it street 382 and house 550? Or is it street number 38 and house 250? Or is it street 3825 and house number 50? You see, there's, there's gotta be some delineation regarding you know which part is the actual street name and which part is the actual house address. You with me? Because if we don't have that information, the, inform the, the, the letter won't be able to be delivered correctly. So in the big picture, Bob is sending a packet or wants to communicate with a server. So at the application layer, let me make sure I can see this in my uh, today's stand brought to you by Palo Alto Networks. <laughs> Let me make sure I can see that right there. All right, good enough. So as Bob is Bob's computer is communicating with the web server at the application layer, it's going to be using things like HTTP. At the transport layer, it's going to be using. Um, I'm moving that out of screen, wrong direction. There we go. Let me bring this full right there. There we go. All right. At the application layer, Bob's going to be Bob's computer is using HTTP or some application layer service. At the transport layer, layer four, it's going to be using TCP because that's how HTTP was written. And at layer three, which is the network layer, we are, Bob's computer is going to add on those addresses, the source address and the destination address. And that's the focus of what I'd like to talk about in this uh, live stream is the details, more details for an IPv4 address. And I thought, you know, I get, I, I don't have a lot of free time, but I have a little free time. And so oftentimes what I'll do is I'll come up with what I think are creative or interesting ways of teaching something. And so I came across an idea and I thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a shot. So I test, I test drove this on a couple people. Um, the first time it didn't go well, I wasn't prepared enough. And then the second time I asked my wife, Dina, if she would uh, uh, let me share her with her something about IP addressing. And she goes, okay. She, she's, a, she's a fantastic woman. She's a, an artist, singer, performer. She's, she works for Cirque du Soleil. She sings at O. Um, amazing show. If you ever had a chance to go see oh, it's Goosebumps, just amazing, amazing music, amazing artists. Anyway, back to the topic. So uh, I, I said, I'd like to tell you about IP addresses. And I then, with some preparation, shared with her what I'm about to share with you regarding IP addresses. And she goes, oh, I get it. And I thought, okay, great. It's ready. It's ready for prime time. So I have, um, I have some rulers that I'm going to use as far as rules associated with IPv4. And I hope you like them. So <laughs> these rulers, we're gonna talk about IP address fundamentals. Now, IP, the acronym, the letters IP, stands for Internet Protocol. But we really don't need to memorize that because we just call it IP. It is the layer three, it works at the, the network layer, logically in the protocol stack, and that's why it's referred to as a layer three protocol. And when we're talking about a packet that has the IP header information added, meaning Bob's source IP address, the server's destination address, when that's added, that's added to that data before it's sent. And we can refer to that information, the IP header with the addresses, source and destination, along with the um, payload, which is the transport layer and the data and the application layer. We can refer to that chunk of data as a packet. And that's why oftentimes we call things 
packets in networks is because it's including that layer three source and destination IP address. So as far as the fundamentals go, this is a fun game we can play. There's five things. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go five, four, three, two, one, got it. That's our plan for right now. So as far as the, the five things, the first thing we wanna be aware of with IP version four addresses is that there are four numbers. I'm looking at the screen, make sure it's not upside down. There's four numbers in an IP address, IPv4 address, four numbers, that's it. So four numbers, that's it. Now those four numbers are within a certain range, meaning each of those four numbers is going to be within the range of 0 through 255. That's the rules. Now, we're not always going to use every single possible number, but if we see an IP version 4 address and any one of the numbers is like more than 255, it's not a valid IP address. So the range for each of the four numbers is 0 through 255. Also, to make sure that we can um, know which where the numbers start and stop, each of the four numbers are separated by a period. So it's an IP version four address is four numbers long, separated by three periods. Yeah, there we go. I crossed the I was over holding off the period over here. So four numbers long, separated by three periods. And here's an example of the four numbers and the ranges for those four numbers, I should say. So four numbers long. 0 through 255, and those four numbers are separated by three decimals, three points, three periods. And so because these numbers are decimal, now decimal simply means the number system that most people in the world use, humans, like 0, 1, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, base 10, um, that's decimal. And so what this is referred to is dotted decimal. So if you ever hear somebody say dotted decimal, what they're referring to in an IPv4 address is four numbers, each of those somewhere between zero and 255 inclusive, and the four numbers are separated by three periods. So that's the mystery of dotted decimal is they're referring to an IP version four IP address. Okay, here's an example of an IP version four address. Here's 10.193.2.40. So it's four numbers long, separated by three periods. Ta-da, an IP version four address. Now, here's the part that is important, and we've touched on it, but I want to reinforce it. And that is, in an IP version 4 address, just like an envelope with an address on it, an IP, IP version 4 address only has two parts. <laughs> and those two parts are the network portion, which is a lot like a house number. I'm sorry, a network portion, which is a lot like a street name, like Jones Street, Elm Street, 23rd Street, etc. And the other portion is the actual house number. In computer IPv4 networks, they call it a host address or host ID. So that's it. Two parts. The street that that computer lives on, which is the network address. And the other part of this beautiful IPv4 address is the actual host address. All right. So I've got a question for you. Would it be important if we have an IP address like this one? Would it be important for us to know if we know that part of this address over here is the network and part of this is the actual host address, like street name, house number, would it be important to know where the dividing line is? Like, is it here? Like, is this the 10 network and the host address is 42.3.9 or is it network 10.42 and then the actual host address is 3.9 or is the network address 10.42.3 and the actual host address or house number is nine. You see how it's really important to know where that dividing line is. And this is probably the most important part of this initial discussion we're having on IPv4. There's a way that we can identify which portion of an IPv4 address, which portion is the network on the left, and which portion on the right is the actual host address or house number. And we can do that by using this. <laughs> The mask. The mask is the mechanism that tells us where that dividing line is. And this has a few names. We could call it the mask or subnet mask. But the key is the mask is the guy who says, uh, the dividing line is here or here or here 
based on an IP address. That's it. So an IP version four address, let's do a quick review. And I don't wanna tell you how that, um, we're gonna do a separate video on the mechanics of how a mask identifies that. But let's do the five, four, three, two, one game. There, if somebody says, hey, can you tell me about IP addresses? I'd like you to practice this. And you can pause this in, in the replay. Pause, <laughs> pause it and replay it a few times and just get it down pat. So if somebody says, hey, tell me what you know about IP uh, addresses. And again, IP version four. We say, well, you know what? I know five, I know a few things about IPv4 addresses. And starting off, there are four numbers in an IP version four address. Each of those four numbers are in the range of zero through 255. It can't go to negative numbers and it can't go greater than 255 for each of the numbers. Those four numbers are separated by three periods. That keeps it straight. It's like uh, where one number starts and one number stops, they're separated by three periods. Sometimes these IP addresses are referred to as dotted decimal. The dots refer to the three periods and the decimal numbers, based on the numbers we use as humans, is how they're represented when we look at them on computers or on paper or whatever. So, so there are four numbers separated by three periods. There's only two parts of an IP version four address. That's it. There's the network portion. It's a lot like a street name. And then there's the ho house address or the host ID, the host address, which is a lot like a house number on that street. And so over on the right hand side, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm doing this all backwards for you, but I mean, I have to flip everything in my mind as I present this because you're looking at me. So on the left-hand side over here is going to be the network portion. And on the right-hand side over here is the host portion. And then because it's important to know which portion is the network and which portion is the host, there's a dividing line and there's a device, a mechanism that's used for the dividing line. And that's this bad boy right here. It's the mask. The mask points to the dividing line. Everything to the left of that dividing line is the network. Everything to the right of that dividing line is going to be the actual host address. And that's the only way we could know. Now, there are some defaults on how a mask operates, but it is, make no mistake, it is the mask that's dividing the network portion from the host portion. So what I thought would be fun, put these rulers away, is let's, let's have some fun. And uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun for both of us. And let's look at, our, look at our topology. So here in our topology, I've got some addresses. Let's see here. 42, 3, 10, 42, 3, 9, 77. Okay, great, yeah, yeah, this will work. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this IP address right here on the client PC. Its IP address is 10.42.77.238. And I just so happen to have a ruler with that IP address. So here's the IP address, 10.42.77.238. Now we know you and I, just based on our friendly conversation today, we know some basic information about this IP version four address. This logical layer three address that's used for you know assigning addresses inside of a the TCP IP protocol stack. We know that part of it, we know that there's four numbers, 10.42.77.238. We know that those four numbers are separated by three periods, here, here, and here. Make sure this is not upside down. <laughs> That'd be bad. And we also know that part of this address, the part over here on the left-hand side is the network portion somewhere over here and the actual host address is somewhere over here on the right. And my question for you is, where is the dividing line in this IP address? If we were going to identify like, okay, uh, the dividing line is here, network and all the rest is host. Or is it here, network and all the rest is host. Or here, network and all the, what is the dividing line here? And what I would like you to get in the habit of saying, because it's really important, is we don't know. We don't know where the dividing line is because that's the job of one specific device and that's this bad boy. If we don't have a mask that tells us where the dividing line is, we don't know where exactly that dividing line is. And so it's the mask's job to go ahead and indicate where the dividing line is between the network portion here on the left and the host portion somewhere over here on the right. So I thought to myself, self, how can we make this visual? And here's how we can do it. I created a mask. Um, I learned what kind of solvents will remove the edges of a ruler. <laughs> 
Uh, I tried several different iterations and this uh, this will work. So here is a mask and the mask is the dividing line. So this black line right here is the dividing line between network and everything to this side to the left is going to be the network address and everything to the right of the dividing line is going to be host. So if we took this address here and this is the address right off our, our computer. So I'm going to bring that back for a moment. So this is Bob's computer 10.42.77.238. That hasn't changed. Here's the IP address in dotted decimal, four numbers, three periods. Um, and if we use this mask right here, like that, there we go, let me line that up, okay. So now, with this overlay of the mask, which is kind of how it works, by the way, we can now say, oh, the mask that has the dividing line, everything to this side, is the network. So with a mask like this, the mask would say, hey, this is the 10.42 network. That's like the street name. That's it. And this part over here, over to the right, would be the host address. So we could say that this is host 77.238, this one and this one, on the network 10.42. Just like that. All right, let's do it again. Based on this IP address, no, that's too mean. Yeah, let's do it. Based on this IP address, all by itself, which part is the network and which part is the actual host address? Like street name and house number. And if you're saying, Keith, is this kind of a trick question because you haven't shown us where the mask is going to be? You'd be spot on. I want you to think every time when you see an IP address, we don't know until we see where the mask's dividing line is between the network portion on the left and the host ID on the right. So in this case, if we put the mask here, like that, what that would mean is that this is the street or network ID of 10, and the host address would be everything to the right of that. <laughs> oh my gosh, my brain is on total flip mode because of all. So, the network ID would be 10, and everything from this portion going over this way would be the host ID. So this would be the 10 network, and this is host address 4277238. All right, let's do another one, a different address. How about this one? Let's do this one. So the IP address here is 192.168.25.201. That's the IP address. And my question for you is, which portion of this is the network somewhere over here? <laughs> and which portion of this is the host address somewhere over here? And what should we be, if you're thinking, well, Keith, I, I need to see the mask before I can know where the dividing line is between network and host, you'd be spot on. So let's go ahead and put our mask, let's put our mask right here. So if the mask is right here, so the dividing line is right there, that means that this computer, the, the, the device that has this IP address, the network is 192.168.25. That's the common like street name for all the devices on this logical IP network. And the host address would be 201, just this last part right here. All right, let's play a game. Let's play a game based on this topology. And the game is same network or not same network. So we have this client PC at 10.42.77.238. We have this server at 10.42.3.9. And I happen to have both of those right here. And I will go ahead and put them up. <clears throat> All right, those are the two IP addresses. Let me bring them up on video here. So my question for you is, based on these two IP addresses, 10.42.77.238, which is Bob's computer, and 10.42.3.9, which is the server. Are those two IP addresses for those two devices, are they on the same network or not? Meaning, based on the IP address, the IP address is on the same network. What do you think about that? Now, the benefit of pausing here is to realize that it depends. It depends where the dividing line is. If the dividing line is right here between the 10 and the 42, those two computers are on the same network, the 10 network. And in fact, let's just bring our mask up to do that. If the dividing line, I should have brought more. 
I should have brought more hands to the party. Let me go ahead and uh, just grab those right there. That'll work. If the dividing line is right here between the 42 and the 77 and 3 respectively, that would mean once again that they are both on the same network because they're both on the network of 10.42. But if the mask was here, these two computers would not be on the same network. One computer would be on network 10.42.77, and the other computer would be on network 10.42.3, and those are two like two different street names, like Elm Street and Figueroa, or Maryland Parkway and Las Vegas Boulevard are two totally separate logical street names or network addresses. And those two devices, if they were using those respective network addresses, they would not be on the same VLAN, the same network. All right. So um, I think that's what I wanted to cover. In fact, I'm sure of it. I wanted to cover a basic few things in this uh, video about IP addresses. So let's do a quick summary. And then I would be happy to open it up for any questions if you have them. All right. <laughs> there we go. All right, IPv4 fundamentals as I get my rulers in line here. So many rulers. Okay, if somebody asks about IP addressing, IPv4, we could tell them about five things. Get your hand out five things and start off with one of the, one of the first things is. Hold on one second. I get my rulers in line. I should have numbered these better. Oh, there it is. Okay. First thing is they're four numbers long, meaning four decimal numbers long. Each of those numbers have a range, and that range is from 0 to 255. So if you see an IP address, an IPv4 address that has something higher than 255 is one of those numbers, something is off. To separate those numbers, the four numbers, we use three periods. So here's an example of the ranges and the three periods separating those numbers. Here's an example of an IPv4 address, 10.193.2.40. And this IP address and every IPv4 address has exactly two parts to it. It's got the network portion, which is like a street name, and it has a host portion, which is like a house number on that street. So it's the network address first, and then the actual house or host address on that street. And the dividing line that controls that is the mask. And then we did some visualizations with the mask, which I will just do here as a repetition. And there we go. So for this address right here, if the dividing line is like this, what that means is that this is network 10.42.3, based on what the mask says the dividing line is, and the host address or house address is 9. If we use a different mask, like this, the same IP with a different mask, this now means this is street name 10, the 10 network, and the house address is 42.3.9. That's the host address on that street. All right. Well. That was a lot of fun. It was. It was a lot of fun to put it together. I went through um, quite a bit of solvent. I actually took off the actual numbers on these rulers using uh, isopropyl alcohol and uh, some uh, elbow grease to get those off. And um, I will repurpose all those. I'll probably keep them for another discussion. So we've covered uh, the basic fundamentals of an IP address. So it boils down to this. IP version 4 addresses are four numbers long. 0 through 255 are the range, separated by three periods. There's two parts in an IP address, the network portion, the host portion, and the dividing line is the number one thing that we need to be aware of is in dividing the host network from host, and that is the mask. So if you're asking or thinking, OK, I get it. I, I understand conceptually how that works, meaning that, that the mask does that job. And what we'll do in another stream coming up, we'll do it. I'm going to do these every Saturday, same bat time, same bat channel, and then I'll put them in a playlist. So if you go to my channel, go to playlist, there'll be one for, I'll call it uh, Subnet Saturday. Um, but in the Subnet Saturday, what I'll do is I'll put these in order so you can catch up, you can review, you'll be easy to find them. And then in our next uh, live stream for Subnet Saturday, what we'll do is we'll take a look at how. How does that mask 
identify, you know, which portion is the network and which portion is the host and we'll remove the magic there. So just one logical step at a time, piece by piece, it'll, it'll be a cinch. So I'm going to take a quick peek at the queue and see if there's any burning questions. I also realize that there's a lot of people who are answering questions for other people, which is fantastic. I also want to point out, um, as I take a look at the queue, if you have not yet subscribed to Keith Barker Networking here on YouTube, uh, please feel free to do so. We'd love to have you as part of the community. If you hit the alert bell, it'll give you a heads up when I have the new live streams. And uh, for more training, we also have a, a boatload of training. I work full time for CBT Nuggets. We have a boatload of training also. Um, at CBT Nuggets, it's quite amazing. Jeremy Chara, myself, Jeff Kish, Knox Hutchinson, and uh, and Network Chuck, and many others uh, creating that content there. So that's another resource as well. So let me put on some music. I'll put back on uh, my topology here for a moment. I'm gonna check out some questions in the queue, and I will be right back. All right, I don't see anything pressing and burning that needs to be addressed at this moment. So um, going forward, I've got live streams on Sundays and also some on Wednesdays. I'll keep you updated in social media when all those are happening. I appreciate you being here. Again, click on subscribe, click on the alert bell, make sure you don't miss a single session regarding CCNA, subnetting, or anything with networking. I love IP networking. So we'll see you in the next stream. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for being here. Bye, everybody.